the person who married a tree years ago has, uh, still says the relationship's going strong. I mean, look, it's a story where you can just sit around doing puns all day, what they didn't grow apart, eat. Um, but I, I mean, I liked stories like this, which always... They are the utter... talking to me, etc. Right, nice, yeah. Bark's worse than its bite, something like that. But these stories are actually, in part, they start to cheer me up. I like a story that's absolutely substanceless. It is someone who's realised you can get in the newspaper by doing something that's not that bizarre. Oh, it's not an actual marriage, you know. In the event of there being a divorce, this marriage won't mean that the tree owns half the stuff. So it's not real. It just gets you in the newspapers. I do like the fact that... I've not spotted any news stories, and I read a lot of tabloid rubbish for the various things I do for a living. I've never spotted uh, a gentleman doing this. This tends to be only to the lady side. And this shows what's wrong with the, the day of marriage. Because if a bloke were to have a fake getting married to himself ceremony, it's just a day in an annoying suit. There's not anything else that you get that's particularly good. Now, the stag do is traditionally good for the blokes, but that's just people being problematically drunk on a weekend. That happens every weekend. It's not like there needs to be a special event for it. Um, but it's nice to know, to check in with this this lady who says that relationship is still going strong. There are also, we hear the stories of the, the, the woman who fell in love with the Eiffel Tower. Mm-hmm. There's an actual, I mean, there's a word that describes the condition of being able to fall in love with an inanimate object. Again, I feel the obvious punchline of, wait, it's like any husband after a couple of years. Wait. Yeah, all those jokes. Um, so, I mean, look, there is. Then, as soon as you get underneath the part of the story that's quite light and fluffy, I do start to worry about are we just entertaining someone and being entertained by a story about someone who has some mental health issues? Maybe we shouldn't take it so lightly. But I don't want to make everything serious. So, let's just imagine, you know, step one is being a tree hugger. But if you're going to commit, this is what you've got to do. In fairness to, to, to men, much as they very rarely, in my experience, you're quite right, Steve, uh, marry inanimate objects. Um, uh, if you if you read a story about somebody who's broken into the zoo and interfered with one of the animals, oh, it's always a fella, isn't it? I mean, breaking and borrowing into the aardvark enclosure. It's never Deborah from Stevenage, is it? It's always a bloke. And um, that's why we know that the global pandemic was caused by blokes, because somebody shagged a pangolin and it wasn't us, was it, girls? There's no way that was one of the girls. So it's like there's a definitely space for buck passing here. I mean, I know I'm not saying Boris Johnson would shag a pangolin, but his last male predecessor shagged a dead pig, allegedly. So, um, you know, I think there's precedent there among the uh, senior ranks of the Conservative Party. Somebody somebody got over friendly with a pangolin and uh, in a lot of ways, it'd be better if they'd stuck to the trees. What was the other one? Was it was a pangolin? But what was the other suspect? It wasn't, there were two. Bats. Bats. Bat yeah, pangolin. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Isn't it quite hard to seduce a bat? <laughs> I mean, I think it's trickier to seduce hurt. a pangolin. <laughs> The pangolins well, can roll up woo- as a protected ball. That's yeah, surely yeah, hard. Social hours, that's for sure. Yeah. I just don't know how you woo a bat, really. I just don't know how that has, must have happened. Must have really gone, you know, put the work in for that one. But, yeah, it, I mean, interesting points, because, yes, inanimate um, objects, though I did hear not so long ago, I think we had it on our show, which was um, a dog, a woman who married her dog because she was sick of being single. But I don't think yeah. that, again, I think that was a publicity thing. It wasn't like a serious thing. But, of course, there are states in, in America where, of course... Um, generally speaking, it is men who seem to marry the, you know, animals. Um, so both kind of correct. Oh, also uh, sometimes always... sex dolls. Yes, you get, you sex. get stories about men marrying sex dolls, don't you? That doesn't. <laughs> <happen laughs> jump in on that because I, I have always thought that there must be a bit of material about how, if anything, it's counterintuitive that in terms of sex dolls, women tend to just have the thing that replicates just the one body part, whereas. So a bloke who's got a sex doll at least has the full... But you could try and spin it as like, oh, maybe this is more romantic. And then there's always a clip of the bloke who owns them who's always like, oh, she's lovely. Never a chance. <laughs> Ruins any moral high ground you could try and build. Oh, dear. It just goes to show how, how our dating is, basically. I mean, if it's not dog, Basically, it goes dogs, trees, men. That's essentially the order. But, yeah. Wow. <laughs> 